the Hedgeless Horseman here. Uh, in this video I'll be following up on my recent SK mining uh, piece and uh, yeah the main reason is simply because I'm so damn excited about this case and I in this video will try to hammer in a point that is in my opinion uh, extre extremely important to get uh, in terms of you know understanding the let's say true potential uh, of SK Mining's land holding. Uh, so let's begin with just looking at okay, what is a VMS deposit? It's a it's basically formed by black smokers on the ocean floor that spits of metals basically uh, and you know uh, the metals they come up from deep underground uh, they come up to the ocean floor uh, and they mix with uh, seawater basically they get cooled off and the metals start to shed out of the hydrothermal fluids and and you know fall down basically uh, like you know if you oversaturate a glass with salt let's say it starts to you know uh, trickle down uh, and, and settle in the bottom of the glass. Here's another picture of a VMS deposit and here you have this uh, footwall stockwork stringer zone uh, and that's been talked about a lot in the SK Mining's news releases because most of the holes so far has actually been in the, the feeder zone which basically is the uh, you know the area where the hydrothermal fluids traveled up to the sea floor and this is the actual you know the conventional target let's say i mean as far as i know there are a bunch of uh vms feeder zones that aren't really economic uh because they're not you know concentrated enough in terms of metals because w when they get up here they at least you know when the the metals start to settle down i mean they get get truncated obviously because they, they you know fall in the same place so if this was uh, you know active for a long time there's going to be a lot of metals just laying around and concentrating on the sea floor uh, whereas you know perhaps not so much in terms of metals endowment was concentrated or got stuck in in the feeder zone uh, when things you know cool down let's say but uh, as you probably know we've had some stellar stellar results from you know one or more of the feeder zones uh, at tv and jeff because it it's apparently a stacked system i'll go into that uh, a bit more later uh, but i think quinton said in the recent k report interview that he, he he's not aware of uh seeing a feeder zone that impressive you know the i think the 117 meter hole at a bit over four grams per ton AU equivalent. I think that's from the feeder zone. Uh, you know, from a broader, what was it, 216 meters or 2.6. I mean, th those are incredible. Uh, you know, grades over those kind of widths, and that's not in the in the main main pace pace on. That's not the main target. The, the original SK Creek deposit was not a in the in the feeder zone. Uh, so uh, and, and yeah, I think he said he is not never seen uh, anything you know such a robust feeder zone. And again, we'll go into this later. The fact that it's you know one feeder zone, let's say, or a few. Uh, and the main point will of this video will be to highlight the fact that, as you can see here, uh, uh, this is from an older article of mine. Uh, uh, which stated, and, and this was early on when they, you know, John De Decker uh, got to work and really dug into it with Thomas Monique, etc. On SK Mining's land tenure, six mineralized horizons have now been confirmed within the entirety of the Hazelt Hazelton Group strate stratigraphy. Six mineralized horizons. Mineralization within the older Betty Creek formation indicates blah blah blah. Uh, and VMS hydrothermal activity within the SK Rift began much earlier than previously thought. The indi implications of this discovery are profound because it means the entire Hazelton Group stratigraphy's perspective for uh, SK Creek like VMS deposits. So just a, let's say a decade ago or so, the 
the thought was that this contact mudstone up here, this dashed line in, in the in the blue package, the Bowser Lake group, uh, or, or the contact between the ba uh, Bowser Lake group and SK uh, Rhyolite, let's say, Th that was the only known uh, package of rocks that uh, was thought to host VMS deposit because this is in this horizon is where the SK Creek deposit the the you know highest highest graded silver and gold mine in the entire uh, world in, uh, in in form of a VMS uh, was located in this horizon and th this is obviously uh, you know going from older to younger rocks so the thought was that only during uh, when this was the sea floor uh, after all of these uh, rock packages had formed and been laid down this is when it was believed that uh, vms for uh, vms deposit formation took place that it was a you know a a single event or a single period in time that actually formed VMS deposits uh, in the SK Creek district. And now, uh, thanks to John De Decker and company, uh, they, they know that there's so far six confirmed mineralization and, and that VMS deposits began to form on this, you know, uh, seafloor, ancient seafloor uh, in this uh, part of BC much earlier than expected so and that as as he states here uh, uh, profound because it means the entire Hazelton group strategic freeze perspective for SK Creek, uh, Creek like VMS deposit so I, I will go into this a bit later but but basically uh, instead of all these packages of rock being barren uh now it appears that you know when this was the let's say sea floor vms deposits uh were, were active uh, or vms formation took place and spread out metals forming deposits and and then maybe you know there was a quiet period and more more uh, mudstones and whatever got laid upon that and then they uh, got activated again this uh, this uh, sea floor uh, got activated again and and laid down more VMS deposits, and then maybe a quiet period, and then more uh, VMS deposits, and then a quiet period, and more VMS deposits. I'm not sure if the six mineralized horizons, if they are distinct uh, VMS mound formations, let's say, but I, but I, I assume so. Uh, I'm just thinking like, okay, if if you have a you know VMS deposit up here. Uh, obviously fluids would have gone through the other ones and and you know there's been it would be feeder mineralization through uh, you know uh, let's say multiple layers uh, but uh, I think it's let's say up to six uh, actual VMS events and that's why they put in the uh, or uh, this is shown in this slide about the TV and and Jeff Horizon uh, a TV we have so far just uh, grilled the upper stockwork zone, which I mean, since it's an upper, uh, since, since it's a stockwork zone, basically a feeder. So there's something that it, that it fed. I mean, there's a there's a VMS deposit some uh, somewhere up uh, up stratigraphy, uh, lower stockwork zone, and I I don't think I mean I don't think we've hit. Uh, there should be, a, I guess, a VMS deposit, a uh, VMS mount somewhere around here, or possibly uh, it could have been, you know, that this was uh, this part of the rock package, let's say, was, uh, you know, stockwork mineralization and the actual VMS mount was here, but it cut through the other ones. I'm not sure about that, but like TV and if, 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 uh, uh, I, I guess I'm just you know highlighting the fact that uh, that we we have no idea how many more horizons. So it's like akin to, and I'll, I'll show this later. It, it's akin to, well, well, I, I, actually I'll get to that. Uh, but like, understandably, I mean, if, if there was one one single VMS forming event here, 
maybe one deposit would have formed TV, but since there were multiple, I mean, the, the thing is that, okay, this does not correlate to this, it's believed. But they have a stock work zone here, so when, when this formed, since there's a stock work uh, zone here, uh, it is it, it must have fed something so we know that if it's if it's here in this stratigraphy which is younger rocks than than this and this is a stock work zone this is again leading to something so we can pretty much bank on there being something up here and then there's the possibility that uh again we 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 can't be sure that i mean this stock work zone here maybe it's you know formed during this the formation of this stock work zone or maybe there's a VMS uh, deposit here because there's a lower massive sulfide deposit here and an upper massive sulfide deposit here. So th there's just vertically speaking, there's a bunch of potential left and they may might connect and may maybe it's not just, you know, uh, maybe it's not just this event that connected. M maybe the lower massive sulfide horizon connects as well. So, so it's like, no, it's it's just it's just bonkers basically. But you could hear that from when Quinton talked. That it's like I mean, it, it would be enough to find one deposit, one event, one VM, uh, VMS deposit that was formed during one event. But if you have multiple, and there are multiple events in in both you know systems, because we assume that there's there was a you know crack, let's say in the ocean floor here, and then in a crack in an ocean floor here, and maybe these were active at you know two two, maybe three uh, VMS forming events. So that's like, you know, it, it's kind of potential, but multiplied. It's it's not just, you know, lateral potential, but it's vertical as well. It's just bonkers. Um, and here was a slide I did uh, earlier. I mean, uh, I'm just showing, trying to show here that the age of the rocks, uh, this is what was believed to be the only uh, host for VMS uh, the actual VMS mound deposits, and that's the original SK Creek deposit, contact mudstone. And like we know now, uh, uh, later, and, and Skeena has started to hit something low. So the, so the SK Creek deposit seems to be, you know, the uppermost part of a, of a, you know, let's say stacked system as well. So it's like, okay, uh, there's been serious drilling at SK Creek and it's just now until they realize it's a stacked system that there are actually you know there's mineralization deeper down okay but SK Mining figured this out with the help of John the Decker realized there were six horizons and they and we started drilling blind and we hit and they confirmed six different horizons so okay up in the north we know there's a stack system down the TV Jeff we know there's a stack system so we know there's you know, been activity, uh, multiple events all the way up to the north and all the way uh, uh, present uh, way down south at TV and Jeff. So one might expect that there's a good likelihood of the area between that to then also have seen multiple events because even further south they, they've uh, confirmed the presence of, of uh, I think the contact mudstone or, or that age type rock so then you know you can just assume that even further south than than uh, tv and jeff that area was underwater as well and uh, you know probably produced some vms deposits uh, as well so all that ties together to forming an even more perspective picture of the whole district uh, and we recently found uh, east of SK Creek, we had, uh, I think it's called Scarlet Ridge now, previously called um, uh, Mount York or New York. And that's also believed to uh, be in the actual contact mudstone. And again, at, SK, uh, at Skeena to the west, where there's uh, original SK Creek deposit, that's a stack system. What are the odds that Scarlet Ridge you know, if, if this is outcropping, maybe there's even, you know, maybe that's a stacked system as well. And this is, uh, you know, uh, I showed this earlier, I think. So now, again, we we know that there's, you know, deposits and, and uh, uh, VMS deposits formed in, in uh, more rock packages than, than just the, the one event uh, 
that led to the formation of the Eskia Creek deposit. And of course, we don't know. There, there will be, you know, small VMS pods, large VMS pods, maybe some black smokers who are just active for, for a short period of time, relative speaking, maybe the, the, the fluids weren't that rich there, etc. But at the same time, okay, why is SK Creek so rich? Why ha did it have like 46 grams per ton and two kilograms of silver? Maybe it had something to do with the fact that it was a it was the upper part of a stacked VMS system. Maybe the fluids leached metals uh, when it, you know the let's say the crack got reactivated, so it started to leach uh, metals from previously formed uh, VMS deposits. Who knows? I don't know. And, and this, of course, highlights uh, or is a good slide uh, because again. They used to think that, okay, Bowser Lake Group, they used to think that one horizon in the top, that during only that period when that content mudstone was laid down, that's when they believed that VMS, form, uh, VMS forming events happened. Basically, that, that's the only time when there were faults active, let's say, that spewed out melts. And now we know that much earlier, when this was the seafloor, VMS deposits were created. And later, more VMS deposits were created. So, so it's like a, a, a layered cake, let's say. I mean, you, you have up to potentially six events. And so that obviously means that, first of all, where you have these stacked systems, that's going to be mean that there's going to be a lot more potential per square kilometer. And maybe some faults in some areas were active at different times or whatever. So I would guess that, I mean, the, maybe some area saw the misformation at this point in time, but then later it didn't. And there was a fault at another place uh, when this was formed that created some BMS deposits. Uh, this, uh, that slide again, we looked at this and this is from Skina Resources where they show this. Uh, this is the contact mudstone. So again, this is uh, the period when they only thought uh, uh, VMS, VMS formation took place in the SK Creek district. And now we know, and they know that there's a lower mudstone and an even lower mudstone. And maybe, maybe, you know, again, Maybe the mineralization in the lower mudstone is, you know, mostly or only feeder type mineralization because uh, it actually just went through it and it didn't actually, it wasn't active when this was the sea floor. But when this was the sea floor, fluids came in and started lay down, uh, laying down VMS formation. So we don't know if it's, you know, uh, if it's two, three, four five or six different time periods when you know this district lit up with the mess formation what we know is that there's uh, i guess i mean according to this, this slide at least two and the the decker has confirmed in six different horizons so possibly it's even up to six uh even up to six different episodes which would be completely bonkers just to highlight that, this is, I think it's the F uh, Flin Flon district, uh, Canada, famous VMS camp. And here you have, there's the scale bar, two kilometers. Here you have VMS deposits occurrence. Okay, it's like uh, nothing confirmed here and you see sample sites. Okay, so there's like, okay, two dots or, or two diamonds within uh, two kilometer. Here's one, maybe four or five kilometers away. You know, I mean, over a pretty large area, there's, uh, what is it? Maybe 10 or 12 confirmed VMS occurrences. Okay, this is another slide. Uh, I don't remember where I took it from, but major VMS mining districts. You'd see the scale bar here, five kilometers. Okay, so you have the Kakabal uh, CUAU VMS. Um, and, and of course, there might be more potential here. I'm not saying that, but like, okay, if this is five kilometers, like two occurrences within five kilometers. Here's like three within, I don't know, 10 kilometers and three uh, within, you know, a radius of, let's say, or, or a diameter of, let's say, five kilometers. And here you have, you know, two over 10 kilometers. Uh, he, uh, here there seems to be more, uh, but noticed per, 
five kilometer of strike, let's say, it's typically not more than two. But there are, there are some clusters here. There are some clusters. And maybe those also saw multiple events. But this, for example, I mean, that, that's just a uh, one, two, three, four, five, uh, six over, no, I don't know, thir 30 kilometers. Let's keep that in mind. This is Bisha, famous African VMS camp. Um, uh, here you have stores where there's uh, exploration targets and uh, here you have the favorable horizon. Again, it's singular, so it might be, mean that there's one horizon, meaning there was one point in time that VMS deposits formed here. And maybe they're just, you know, folded onto each other or maybe there's there was, you know, two, two uh, VMS forming events, I'm not sure. But, but you can see that there's, you know, five kilometer scale bar. I mean, there, yeah, there's a, you know, a couple of stars, let's say, but, but nothing too extreme. It basically jives with uh, most here. And, and then listen to this where Quinton talks about, uh, you know, let's say stratigraphic potential. And you can see there's a lot of room between them. We have just a scattering of holes around TV and Jeff. So, you, you know, there's lots of blue sky here. Uh, what's really, really intriguing, and I know this sounds a little bit too scientific, I don't want to get off into the weeds, but basically these deposits, TV and Jeff, occur in what's called the Betty Creek Formation, which is in the lower part of the perspective stratigraphy at SK Creek District, okay? This is, uh, this is equivalent to Skeena's lower mudstone and even lower mudstone. What does that mean? Well, it means... We have yet to test the SK Creek part of the system higher up here at TV Jeff. So there's a huge, huge possibility for us. Uh, so that's one indication. But the other important thing is this tells us that we have very large VMS systems lower in the stratigraphy. So this basically opens up the entire package of Hazelton Group rocks in this area for exploration. I think a lot of these anomalies we've demonstrated, these these sky tim anomalies, these little blister-like features that you see over several kilometers, about six or seven kilometers along strike with TB and Jeff, I think we're going to see multiple discoveries. And I also think that down at, at C10 and Vermilion, where we see similar anomalies and the bleg samples, those stream sediment samples, tell us we have very high-grade you know, gold potential and, and silver potential, and then up in the northeast at, at this new Scarlet Ridge discovery, I think these are all going to be a VMS. I've said this many times. I think we have about 85% of the ground. That's perspective for these precious metal-rich VMS in the SK Creek camp. And I think we're going to find we're going to find multiple deposits, but we also have a very good chance of finding the granddaddy. Okay, SK Creek was a small deposit. It was only about three million, you know, less than three million tons that Barrick mined back in the day. Skeena, yes, they have quite a few million tons of the lower grade material. Uh, but I think, given the dimensions of these, look at this intercept: two hundred and thirty-nine meters. Holy cow! Of mineralization, the stock work, that's got to be a record, you know, for any VMS that I know. Okay, let's stop there. Again, uh, just to recap what he, he touched on. Uh, basically, he, he was obviously talking about you know uh, the potential higher up in the stratigraphy because, again, the the package of rocks where the SK Creek deposit was formed w were in younger rocks. So we have a stockwork zone here. We have a stockwork zone here. So that means the fluids ended up somewhere. So we're already finding, you know, upper massive sulfide horizon here, lower massive sulfide horizon here. So we know that there was two VMS forming events over a TV, which suggests that there were at least, uh, or up to two at, yeah, or not even up to two, <coughs> probably two. But the thing is, this is a stock work zone as well. And this is suggesting that there's a third event at TV. That might be a third event that Jeff, is that leading up to the SK Creek uh, rock package? I, I'm not sure. M maybe there's even you know a mo one more after that. But but it, it, it's just insane that we're we're drilling like he's, uh, you heard Quinton's like the insane 
results we're getting from the stock work zones. And we have yet to even find the first, I think, confirmed BMS horizon over at Jeff. And we have yet to find what's uh, even higher up, where, where the stock work zone is leading to. And the TV, that's also open at depth, on uh, down stratigraphy to where they're hitting at Jeff, on top of where this stock work zone is going. So, so it's just, I, I can't emphasize this enough. This is ridiculous. That's like, you know, you have three BMS uh, here, at least two BMS camps on top of each other. And, and, and again, just to uh, highlight the fact where, you know, when he said the entire district might be mineralized. Okay. Look again at, uh, you know, uh, I wouldn't say frequency, but concentration in many of these camps. Again, five kilometers. There's one. Hypothetical alteration area of influence. Okay, you saw the Bisha, you know, uh, five kilometers. So there's five, but you know, not m many more uh, except that. So I'm guessing it's, you know, your physics target. So maybe there's a blister like Quinton said here and here. here. Okay, now that, uh, and this might, let's say, let's say it was one time period where BMS formations sp uh, formed here and sped up fluids. So if we have, at least two, maybe up to six in the East SK Creek district. Then you can understand why we're seeing this picture. This is one kilometer scale bar. And, and this is around, I don't know, you know, seven kilometers or six kilometers uh, of strike on one side of the anticline. And, and obviously, I mean, mother nature does its thing. So this is just a, I mean, this is folded folded over on itself uh, I'm gonna f yeah so so uh, so this is what it looks t like today and I mean it's pure luck what would be outcropping basically I mean if this thing here eroded away and you're fine I mean this might you know if this formed over there instead you might not see anything so it's like total let's say randomness what actually is close to surface today and you're seeing, you know, blip after blip after blip, just in this slide alone, you're seeing, you know, multiple uh, sky tem anomalies. So, so there's like more exploration targets here than, uh, the, than there are like, you know, theoretical or, or bankable, let's say, VMS deposits at, at Flin Flon, which I, where's that image? Uh, here so again it's like compare that compare all these blisters and this is flin flon which has been in production for i guess 60 years and you can see sample sites so, i mean it's it's been drilled all over the place and i don't know if this is up to speed let's say if it's uh, what it looks like today but there's not too many over a you know 20 kilometer uh, strike here let's say one two three four five six and this is like six kilometers with blisters all over the place on the right side and more blisters to on the west side. And that's from this slice of the entire package that SK Mining uh, controls. And and see blue, I mean, that doesn't show up. I mean, here you see the black samples are kind of, you know, low, but they've hit, you know, there are some historic really good grades here, like, I don't know, 16. 10 meters of like, I don't know, 35 grams per ton AU, something like that. I'm not 100% sure. Uh, but TV Jeff, I mean, yes, this is uh, 10 to 30 ppb. And, and, and uh, that shows up. But you can see here, I mean, uh, I don't have a scale bar here, but, but this is like 10, 15 kilometers. And it's orange all the way. And down here it gets very interesting, and this is I don't know, you know, eight kilometers or something. And here you have, and there you have, and here you see stuff lighting up. This is the Vermilion Ridge where they, or Scarlet Ridge where they confirmed that SK Creek aged rocks are present with VMS in them. And here's red. And again, these might be stacked systems. So when you think about it, that. At TVGF, there were at least a TV. There were at least two 
VMS forming events. And according to John de Decker, the, uh, VMS mineralization has been found in six. So maybe this district here lit up, or parts of it lit up, up to six different times. So theoretically, you have two to six one event VMS districts that's pancaked, uh, pancaked on top of each other. So, yeah, I mean, from uh, if you get what I mean, I mean, if th this might be a good district if there was one event, because it formed, you know, uh, a few, uh, a few VMS deposits. But if it's two to six events, maybe you, you could like okay, m maybe that there wasn't wouldn't been two to six times the amount of dots here, but you know, this might have three VMS systems stacked on top of each other. So, so it's just obscene. And, and again, we know that given the results out of the feeder zone at TV and the high grades, uh, uh, high grades, nice grades in the stock work, obscene, obscene drill results from the stock work. And those were much lower down the strategic for the Niske Creek. So we know that the, the early rock packages are economic and we've hit high grade gold and silver in the lower actual VMS formation. So we know there there were precious metal rich events prior to the formation of the SK Creek deposit uh, that looks to have high grade gold, economic high grade uh, gold and silver. I mean, again, th this is the main point of this entire video. Think like this is potentially two to six VMS districts pancaked on each other. SK, uh, SK mining controls 85% of it. So the potential of two to six VMS districts in the same area, one company controls 85% of it. And this is just to, you know, be even more hyperbole. <laughs> this is the Skeena uh, SK Creek deposits, basically the let's say lower grade stuff, the remnants uh, that uh, Barrick and and Home Homestake didn't mine. Uh, this is not too low. I mean, it's a it's a relatively large deposit. Uh, AU equivalent for a point two mi uh, open pit. Look at the value at seventeen hundred dollar gold. This is one point six billion really good after tax uh i mean 300 million after tax free cash flow i think the capex yeah only us 381 million for that life of mine asic 548 dollars per ounce talk about a high quality mine and you know from an economic standpoint and what do you know i mean franco nevada took a strategic stake in the company Franco Nevada, the most successful royalty and streaming company, which obviously has, you know, the business side of things in mind. So they're saying this is a very economic, very valuable deposit. And as we know, gold and silver is worthless in the ground if you cannot, you know, uh, take it up economically, let's say. But this looks extremely economic. Franco Nevada says it's economic. And this is, again, the remnants of one VMS deposit in one horizon. And this is the footprint of the original SK Creek plus the now drilled out remnant SK Creek deposit. The original SK Creek was a very, you know, like Quinton said in video, uh, not a lot of tons, but super high grade. Okay. And, and that's believed to be worth, let's say around $4 billion today. And SK as uh, Skeena Resources remnant deposit is worth, let's say, 1.4 billion. So that's uh, 5.4 billion in uh, net present value if it would be, you know, found uh, today. Th that is incredible because you can see the footprint here. If this is one VMS deposit formed in one horizon and it's worth, let's say, 5 billion. And even the lower grade stuff, you know, quotation mark, which has, uh, you know, on the order of the grades we're hitting in TV, Jeff is worth 1.4 billion today. So just between TV and Jeff, uh, that's like 
what one and a half uh, of the strike length here and as you saw in the blister picture this continues there there's blisters here here continues all the way through here and just on the other side there's even more blisters and that's only from this part of the entire district so you have more anomalies than you have more targets let's say than i would guess many entire vms districts within just this uh, window here and you have the whole property or, or large parts of the property lighting up with bleg samples and even the ones that aren't lighting up too much you know they have a lot of gold and silver because obviously we drill team in jeff and this is see blue where they've hit high grade so again, I'm just trying to basically hammer in the point just how obscene this case is. It's like, again, two to six VMS districts slapped on top of each other that you're getting in uh, SK mining as, you know, uh, based on what we know now. And, and this, in my opinion, just, you know, the frequency of these um, targets uh, which again is like you know uh, where is that damn bisha uh, five kilometers one target five kilometers uh, five targets and then like I don't know ten kilometers away or eight there's one more one there one there and this is what you see within like a five to seven kilometer strike two sides riddled with exploration targets uh, th this is again a mo most uh, perhaps you know top two most unique exploration stories in the entire space in my opinion uh, simply because this looks to be such a unique round and I mean when you think about that okay if, if there were two to six VMS forming events Maybe that explains why SK Creek, the original SK Creek, was such a you know obs obscene deposit. Forty-six gram per ton AU, two thousand gram per ton silver. One deposit. Uh, and here's a, you know older map where they outlined a bunch of targets. I mean, most of these are VMS targets, and that's again all, uh, only the ones we know of. Uh, Cumberland, Cumberland isn't here. Um, uh, Scarlet Ridge, which is again outcropping, so it's like it, it, if they're finding that in outcrops, I mean, who knows what it, you know, what kind of, how many deposits are, I don't know, hundred meters down or whatever. So, so that's and that I think has been traced for like one point two kilometers would be, which would be as long as the SK Creek deposit. And here you have a. Uh, uh, a, a recent Skinner Resources uh, update basically and, and there they highlight an interesting fact here of course you have the contact mudstone and this is where the SK Creek uh, deposit was located and where they drilled the remnants of it and this is yeah again uh, this is younger rocks these are older rocks and even older rocks and here's the even lower mudstone which they know now it hosts mineralization and this is a lower mudstones and here are historic drill holes uh they don't look too impressive i mean there's like uh, uh 1.2 grams over six meters 1.97 over two 0.84 over eight meters okay you would like okay there's you know really nothing here but obviously it, it shows that okay there's vms mineralization here uh, then they stuck a few holes into it because apparently the old the previous operator because again, this was not known before. They, uh, it's believed for some time that this was the only, this was the only time period when VMS formation took place. Uh, so they drilled in a few holes here. This is what they came up with when they actually assayed the entire holes. Because the previous operators only assayed what looked good. One point oh eight grams over 90 meters 1.72 over 43 uh, 0.62 over 21 uh, 0.64 over 6 0.616 uh, 
uh, 2.33 grams per ton EU equivalent over 60 meters. That's over 100 gram meter intercept. Again, uh, only I think a decade ago, uh, this is the only horizon that was believed. So again, just reiterate, it was believed that only one during one period of time in this area uh, of BC today, only one uh, VMS forming event took place. But now we know that at least during two more up to potentially six time periods, uh, the sea bottom was active uh, in terms of forming VMS deposits. So there were active hydrothermal vents that spat out even more. Uh, yeah, just highlighting the fact that uh, there's three anticlines and this small picture here has this amount of uh, targets. Uh, and th these are the black smokers and these are, you know, uh, how they're forming today VMS deposits. So this, this stock or zone here, this is where we're having these obscene results and we haven't you know, found, uh, we haven't gotten into the guts of any of the VMS, uh, actual VMS mounts, let's say. And th they're still open, both systems still open, TV open at depth. Uh, we don't know the limits yet of either. Uh, to recap uh, this, you know, I, I hope it made some sense. Uh, I, I, I it's it's hard even you know wrap your head around a case like this because I mean the, when you really think about it uh, again it's I have never seen anything like it I mean I, I I don't own too many VMS stories but to have uh, this kind of prospectivity over this area again it's like you have. Uh, two to six VMS districts, the potential of two to six VMS districts in one district, and you own 85% of it. So maybe you find one, not one VMS deposit, you find three on top of each other. Or, or maybe some are actually scattered, So, but that means that there's a bunch more VMS deposits per square kilometer than any typical VMS camp. Either way, it's like the value per the, uh, the exploration potential value per square kilometer for SK mining must be the highest of any VMS explorer in the world I, I think and it just happens to host like the most high grade VMS the pressure metal VMS deposit that's ever been found and was, was worth alone uh, is worth today would be or would be worth today like five uh, billion. Okay, coincidence or are they, you know, if you read between the lines, does it make sense? Does it add up? Yes, I think it really adds up. So just to summarize the key points, SK Mining controls 85% of the, or believed to control 85% uh, of the SK Creek District, 56,000 hectares, tier one jurisdiction, obviously BC is like the, one of the hottest jurisdictions in the entire world right now with a bunch of M&A activity. And uh, we have Newcrest, one of the largest miners in the world, gold miners uh, took over Pretium. We have SK Creek where Franco Nevada uh, invested. So the majors are you know, circling us as well, uh, if you know what I mean. And again, th this is one company that owns all this. Uh, up to six mineralized VMS horizons, and again, I, I don't know for sure if there's if that means if John the Decker meant it was six actual events, or if you know it's been confirmed that there's mineralization through six different uh, rock packages, meaning six different ages. But maybe there were you know two or three actual events, and there was actually the stockwork mineralization simply ran through the older rocks and, and you know formed stockwork mineralization, but not actual BMS mounts. But we know at TV there's uh, at least two, and it's open, and there's stockwork on top, so we can see. Yeah, okay. Now when I think about it, okay, we can see there's at least three. So okay, at TV there's like three. VMS systems on top of each other. 
uh, and counting, May maybe even more. So let's say three to six actually uh, VMS camps in one camp and at least at TV. So we don't know how uh, wide stretch that is, but okay, just to re reiterate. Uh, down here they found SK Creek H rocks and at SK, uh, and here they found the SK Creek H rocks. So what what time period formed uh, during the time period that SK Creek uh, deposit was formed? This was also underwater and this was also underwater and here we have confirmed uh, mineralization as well and obviously this is lighting up, you know, really good. So when the SK Creek deposit formed you have a triangle here where VMS formation probably took place here, probably took, uh, we know it took place here, and we know it took place here. And the TV Jeff, a TV, you know, there were three different VMS forming events. And at SK Creek, they're finding, and this might be a stock work administration, but I'm assuming according to their own slide, at least two events. So, okay, three events at least at TV, at least two events at SK. We know the SK event took place here, here, and here. So, I mean, again, it's like crazy, super crazy stuff. Uh, and <laughs> just to hammer home the point, let's say. Uh, Let's pretend that th this is a district with uh, uh, which was underwater at one point and VMS formation took place. Maybe there was one deposit here, one deposit there, one deposit there, one deposit there. Okay, that was one event. Uh, then a couple of, let's say, million years passed and, and these got, you know, buried. Then there was another VMS forming events, the, the cracks, let's say the, yeah, the, the cracks in the ocean floor reactivator again. Maybe another found, uh, formed on top of this one, creating a stack VMS system. Uh, maybe it's formed over this one as well. Uh, and then maybe this fault wasn't activated, but there was a crack over here. So here we uh, formed another district, uh, another VMS deposit. And maybe one got formed here, there was a crack in the ground, okay? Then time passed and and uh, I should have used different color. Uh, let's say time passed and we have a third event, like a TV. Pretend this is TV. Then we have a third deposit that formed. Maybe if a third one formed here. Maybe this crack re uh, reactivated, so we have a double stack deposit uh, maybe a crack open up here so we have one more there and and maybe this one actually got reactivated as well so we have a three stack or uh, three VMS deposits on top of each other three here two there two there these are single maybe one formed up here okay and we don't know how far this goes but let's say let's go up to four okay you have uh, you have uh, a few million years pass again, all these deposits gets buried and then the ocean floor opens up again. And we actually get a four stacked VMS deposit here, four deposits on top of each other. Maybe this area also, but it's slightly off, so it's 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 formed there, okay. Maybe uh, this old fault actually, from the first event, maybe that opens up, we have a, uh, that creates a double stacker. And maybe we get one here, maybe we get one there, and let's say the other faults along here uh, didn't reactivate. So you're, you're seeing where I'm going with this. It's like the original was, let's say, four deposits or, or six deposits in, in one entire district. But in a multi-event district, you might have one area where there's four stacked deposits or or three and a double there and there's you know uh, in terms of uh, just amount there's a lot more than the original and and some are you know extremely 
rich because they're so you know they, they're, they're stacked on top of each other and this is like if we would say a cross-section of it that okay uh, th this is where they thought the only VMS, this, uh, VMS formation happened and this is uh, young rocks Jesus oh Jesus uh, old rocks uh, and uh, it was believed that it you know uh, uh, these rocks had already been laid down and here we have a feeder zone leading up to the SK Creek deposit what John de Decker and now Skeen are finding out obviously is that when this was a landmass uh, or when this was the seafloor uh, there was VMS formation as well and that you know a TV there was an even earlier VMS formation uh, and in TV and Jeff uh, a TV will confirm two which is open uh, up section uh, and down section and that Jeff uh, let's say we found mineralization here uh, and that's open all the way to this one so we know TV is at least a three stack system Jeff might be a three stack system we don't know there might be even more stacks on top of this because we haven't reached uh, this area yet so maybe there's one at TV between here as well so again th this is just absurd it's like you take the potential of one VMS district and then you double it by having let's say two events taking place and at, at TV we know there were three events and that's why you have you know I think more potential sulfide bodies and sky time sky time anomalies pointing out potential targets in in this small area than you might have in in you know most most entire districts F world famous flimflon district uh, other famous districts here here you have you have some areas actually where you have more stacks so maybe this was a you know two event uh, district and and this as well where you have you ha you see these clusters as well i mean or it might be a one event or a three event but th this uh, but the sk creek district seems just bonkers honestly uh so up to six mineralized vm has vms horizons we know there's three at tv so three to let's say six uh like up to six vms camps in one camp so but let's say there's uh, around tv for example three to six camps on top of each other potential for uh, you know square uh, a square kilometer kilometer to be abnormally large i mean that's given because you might have many uh, systems on top of each other or more systems uh, laterally uh, and of course the synergies because uh, for sk uh, i mean if you're going to build a mine here i mean this might uh, this vms deposit might not you know be a standalone mine but it might be worth something when you have uh, the sk remnants here so that just yeah i mean again this would have no value if it was a loan but since it's part of a stacked system and this uh, part of the this upper system is so good this might you know have economic value so all of a sudden you created value just from synergies so the question is what is this going to look like in a few years two years five years if you listen to Quinton, he, he believes that there's, you know, all of these are legit targets. Uh, and that's just from this area. And you have the sky, uh, Blake anomalies all, all over the place for like 10, 15 kilometers. And we know there's, you know, three to six, six VMS uh, forming districts on top of each other. And this alone is probably worth today four to five billion. Do you know any junior with this kind of blue sky potential? There are, there are not many, can't be, <laughs> can't be many. I don't know a single VMS exploration story uh, that's even close, I would say. 
Uh, again, this is why uh, I haven't sold a share. Uh, this remains my largest position. And uh, even at five, I mean, again, okay, I don't know what the actual market cap is right now. Let's say it's 540 millions, uh, million. What's 50 million worth when you consider the, all this? When you consider this, what's 50 million? If That's four to five billion. What what's fifty million, give or take? In light of all this, four to five billion. Eighty-five percent of the district. TVGF already looks to be a monster. Uh, I reckon you know. Uh, probably at least billion plus here we're at 500 let's say 40 million so you get everything you, you get six you know three to six camps stacked on top of each other with Blake sample and obelisk for multiple trends yeah yeah I mean uh, again it's like when, when and I'm affected by it too obviously you look at okay yeah you know 540 million it's like okay it moves up and it's you know let's say 580 million and you're like oh that's expensive but when you actually think about it it's like 50 million even if it's still you know potential I mean that's a drop in the bucket if this is worth four to five billion What's 50 million? This is not investing advice. I'm super, uh, <laughs> consider me biased. Uh, obviously, I get a lot of skin in the game. Uh, I'm, uh, uh, they're a banner sponsor. Uh, do your own due diligence. Uh, I, I'm, you know, in my opinion, I, I've, this is, uh, you know, one of the absolutely most remarkable cases I've ever come across. I think the, the, the blue sky for SK Mining is beyond. I mean, a, a, one junior would kill to have what TV and Jeff found. This might be a multi-billion dollar deposit. And if you ha and the, if this was one VMS district, that would be enough. I mean, if there was one event here. There might be a few more deposits, so you would be happy of, let's say, having a, you know, let's say one billion plus multi-billion potential just from this, and you reckon there might be a few more. But if you have three to six Gotham districts on top of each other, yeah, yeah, enough said. Uh, I don't think. I mean, th this is this is way too crazy in my opinion for you know for myself and others to really grasp because uh i, I don't know uh i i have nothing to compare it with if this was one you know vms event or possibly two but you know three plus and you're already starting with you know a three stack system here probably you know a three stack system here plus i mean where do you go from there what can i compare this to there's nothing i can compare the sk mining story to because i i have never seen a, a, a case like this and but it, again still you know quote high risk high reward uh so do your own due diligence uh i won't share your profits uh I won't share your losses. I'm just, you know, I'm just a guy who who share sharing my opinions. Uh, thanks for listening. Subscribe if you, you know, like my stuff. Bye bye.